Okay, so this video is going to demonstrate how to use IE Numerator. IE Numerator is a coroutine which can be used to create timers and delays if you want to have a certain task be performed after a certain delay or you only want it to perform for a certain amount of time and then you want it to stop you can use IE Numerator for that. So not a whole lot of graphics we're just going to take a simple white square and the actual changes that are going to be done really aren't relevant. What's relevant is getting the feel for how to use IE Numerator. So let's go ahead and create a script. Call it box control. Let's click on the object, drag and drop the script there, and let's go ahead and open that up. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And now we're going to add a couple variables. So public key code begin demo. So why am I using a key code? And the reason for that is because a lot of times a an action that your player takes, whether maybe they throw out an explosive and there's a timer associated with it, well that timer doesn't begin until you've used the attack button. Okay? So I want to demonstrate how to link I enumerator from a key press because that's one of the most common ways or common reasons why you're going to uh, use this as others as well. So it can create a delay before something happens or something happens immediately and I enumerator is used to then terminate that task after a certain amount of time has passed. Like say a flamethrower. You press the button you want the flame to come out for a few seconds and then you want it to stop. You can also use it for maybe timing background uh, animations. And then we'll just add another variable in case I need it for anything. Public float Go ahead and save that. Zoom in a little bit. Now we go to the object and you now see we've got some variables there. So for the key press we'll just use the space bar and then we'll continue. Now we kind of have to do this out of order because what's going to happen is when I tell the uh, when I write the statement in the update section to use the coroutine well it's not going to recognize the coroutine if I haven't created it so let's jump ahead and do uh, the coroutine so it's going to be outside of start and outside of update it does not have void before it it's just I enumerator then the name of it and then open and close parentheses And what we'll do will be transform dot rotate zero comma zero comma three. So it'll rotate three degrees on the z-axis. But as we said, we want to add a delay. So Okay, so yield return new wait for seconds. So that's pretty straightforward. Yes, you need to use the syntax to make this work, but really, this is what you care about. This is what you, is telling you what's going on. It's going to wait for one second. Now, this doesn't have to be a whole number. It could be, say, one and a half seconds. But make sure you put that letter F, or else it won't work. So if you're using a decimal, got to put the letter F after it or else it gets confused. So, I enumerator process task is saying, and, and this can be whatever you want it to be, I just chose a name uh, to, to, to uh, indicate to me what it's going to do. So it helps, it, it really helps with self-documenting 
when you name the task as meaningfully as possible. So when this coroutine gets called, it's going to wait one second and then it's going to rotate the object that the script is attached to by three degrees. So now we'll go into the update section and we'll check to see if the key has been pressed. So if input dot get key down. Now the reason why it's get key down and not just get key is get key is a rapid fire. So with every single frame it will uh, have a true return whereas get key down is only true for one frame. And we said we're checking for the begin demo key press. Okay. And what did we want to do? We said start coroutine. Which coroutine? We want process task. Oops, sorry. Open parenthesis. And then the name. See how it's there in the list? If I hadn't created these, the coroutine first, this would not be here. So in this case, like I said, you kind of have to write it out of order. And then another set of parentheses. So basically you have to take the name of the coroutine and put it inside of another set of parentheses. Now that should work. So in other words, if the key is pressed, do this coroutine. And the coroutine says wait one second and then rotate by three degrees. Now what's nice about doing this in additional in you know in addition to giving yourself a delay, it also keeps this, the update section, from getting really cluttered with a lot of tasks. So by referring out of the update section, it makes it more clear what this does. Because if somehow you embedded this in here, and then you have say five, six, seven, eight, nine tasks being performed in the update section it really becomes a wall of text that makes it very hard to edit. So here you know exactly uh, what I enumerator is doing. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and run it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to hit the space bar and it's going to wait one second and then it's going to rotate three degrees. Astoundingly boring, but like I said, it's not the rotation that I'm really trying to demonstrate. It's the fact that you can use IE numerator to create a delay. So maybe the delay is an explosion that you just tossed out a hand grenade and it waits one second and then it explodes. Now, what we can do is these can cascade. You can actually have multiple things happen. So let's put in another one, and it doesn't have to be the same amount of time. And this time we're going to do get component. And it's going to be, say, sprite renderer. And it's going to be color. And it's going to be, say, uh, R, G, B. So it will just be red and blue with no green in there. So now, you press the space. It waits a second and then rotates three degrees. Waits another second. And then uh, changes the color. Now since I fixed, uh, since I set the color to an exact number, it doesn't look like it happens again. So let's take that float. So some reason, minus equals 0.1 f. And again, using the decimal, so I have to put the f in there. And we'll do some reason for all of them. Don't have to. Save it. 
Now actually, I want you to see the error, so if it happens, you'll remember. Like I said, you need to use the letter F, so watch what happens when you don't. So you get this error. The best overloaded method match for blah 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 has some invalid arguments. Arguments are the various, for want of a better term, the values that you put into a statement or a command. Okay, So here's the argument, and it's a single argument. So you have to put the F in there. And we just need to set a value for the variable some reason at the top. We'll set it to 1. Reason for it is because RGB range from 0 to 1. 1 is 100% of that color. 0 is 0%. So it'll start at 1. So it'll start at 100%. And it'll reduce by 0.1, effectively 10%. So we'll save that. We'll run it. We hit the space. Wait a second. Rotates. Second half later, changes color. Hit the space, rotates, changes color. So that should just about do it. Like I said, maybe you're doing this to uh, choreograph um, scripted events in the background, things that you want to happen um, in, in some kind of cascading, uh, uh, synchronized manner. Uh, or maybe it's being used for like some kind of weapon that's been triggered. So there's all kinds of usage, but that should get you going using I enumerate. If you have any questions, just put it into uh, the comments. I'll be more than happy to do a follow-up video.